Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm doing a series of commissioned drawings of LeBron James. These are complex drawings consisting of multiple elements as you can see and they're mostly going to be black and white with a few details in color. Well, let me just show you the entire series of these LeBron drawings because there are four of them. My customer requested four of these complex drawings uh, because they're from different periods. And the first one was this uh, drawing. Sorry about this. This is just a tiny smudge here. I'm going to remove it in a second. It's best to do that with a kneaded eraser. So the first one is from his rookie year in the Cleveland Cavaliers. And you can see that it's a complex composition which consists, in each of these cases, which consists of uh, multiple elements, the logo, the larger portrait, and one um, dunk or some other highlight from that season. This was his breakaway dunk in his first game. Uh, so that was the first drawing. And the second one is from Miami Heat with the iconic dunk uh, which was set up by Dwayne Wade. Now the, the challenge here as you can see with all of these drawings is that uh, the, these smaller figures under the portrait they're kind of they're kind of small so it's it can be a little bit difficult to get the faces to look right but I mostly focused on the gestures and the overall uh, movement of the body so this is the so that was the second one the third one was uh, from his return year to the Cavaliers where he won another title and his iconic uh, block uh, of Iguodala's layup and again we have all these multiple elements and of course the final one is from the Lakers uh, with the fadeaway shot uh, with which uh, LeBron surpassed Kareem in the total number of points so those are the four drawings like I said I'm just going to show you the uh, the uh, the drawing process for this one, which may actually be the best one in terms of how it turned out. I'm not really sure you be the judge. Uh, but let's focus on that one and I'm going to show you how I did that. So let's start here. I'm going to show you how the drawing process went for this one. So this is my sketch. As you can see, uh, this is how I arranged the elements. Uh, there's going to be a large portrait in the middle. There's going to be a logo above his shoulder to the right. And of course, the highlight dunk at the bottom with the LeBron and Wade. So uh, I think I came up with a decent looking composition. Maybe it's a little bit, the elements are a little bit um, more stacked in the lower part of the drawing, but um, there's nothing I can really do to make it look better. I don't want to, I don't want to put too much stuff um, in the upper part of the paper because I want the viewer to be able to focus on the portrait. Anyway, as you can see, I'm starting to work with a pencil here and let me say a few words about the pencils I'm using. I'm going to use two kinds of black pencils. I'm going to use the Faber-Castell Polychromos black colored pencil and I'm going to use the Kohinoor silky black pencil. The Kohinoor pencil is a bit darker uh, than the Faber-Castell so I'm going to use it for some of the darkest bits. And in addition to the black pencils, I'm going to use uh, some color, some other colors as well for the logo. But I'll get to that eventually. So now I'm doing this short here. It's a little bit different than in the first drawing. And uh, like I said, it's very short and I needed to find a way to, to create that illusion like you're looking at uh, very short here, almost, uh, almost uh, clean shaven. 
and uh, the best way to do that is just to drag your pencil and allow it to create a bit of texture of its own and then maybe add a few details on top but uh, there's no need to try to draw every single dot or at least that's not what I like to do so the headband now and uh, the headband here is black so I'm mostly gonna make it fairly dark I'm gonna do most of it here with this Faber-Castell black color pencil and I'm going to reinforce some of the darker bits with the Kohinoor pencil. The reason why the Kohinoor silky black pencil is uh, a little bit darker than the Faber-Castell is because it's some kind of a mixture. It feels like a colored pencil but um, it may be a composite of charcoal and some other binder. So it's a little bit darker and you can put it on top of other pencils and it still looks a bit darker than the regular Faber-Castell black color pencil. So I left the white space there for the NBA logo uh, at the top of the head on the on the band and you can't really make out too many details there so I'm just going to draw some suggestions of that shape. Uh, so now I'm moving on uh, with the ear and ears are very interesting to draw they are they're such a three-dimensional part of the body because there are so many of these uh, smaller details some of which are raised others are deeper in the shadow and some people's ear lobes are flatter than others some people's ear lobes are a little bit deeper and more three-dimensional LeBron's are pretty 3D, so I need to have a sufficient range of value in order to be able to explain the shape of the ear. And it seems like a minor detail, but it can sometimes make or break your portrait. Because in this case, when we're looking at the face, like a, it's a three-quarter portrait. Uh, the ear is exposed and... Uh, it's very important for me to make it as detailed and as realistic as possible. Of course, it won't have a huge influence on the overall um, appearance of the portrait in terms of likeness, but it will influence the overall quality of the portrait because if you oversimplify such details, uh, then the drawing won't look very realistic at all. So I'm moving on to the eyebrows here. I did those with the darker pencil to establish those darker areas first. And I also have a, a bit of a shadow area here on, on the nose, on the lower part of the nose and under the nose. So the nostrils themselves are some of the darkest details on the portrait. And there's, there's also a shadow here under the nose. The lighting on this portrait is kind of complex because when you have uh, that indoor lighting um, the light source comes from multiple sources and sometimes the shadows can be a little bit confusing. We're going to talk about that a little bit more once I start working around the eye socket and the cheekbone area. So right now I'm doing one of the eyes. and. Um, I'm going to put my references in the description if you want to check them out or examine them a little bit more thoroughly. The reference for this portrait, the main part of the of this drawing, wasn't really high res, but I thought that it was good enough because sometimes the reference photo doesn't really need to be high res. Um, it can just have nice uh, lighting and decent contrast and as long as I'm able to make out the details and understand the topography of the face, it's not a problem. Moving on to the other eye. Uh, there's a lot of contrast here because the, the area above the upper eyelid is very dark. There's a lot of shadow there. And also I need to shade enough around the eyeballs themselves to make sure that uh, that they stand out, that I create enough contrast there. 
And you can see that uh, I'm shading most of the face kind of carelessly, just going back and forth with my pencil rather than building up a value thoroughly using a tapered stroke. I actually use a combination of the two approaches, but sometimes when I want to get things moving a little bit more quickly and I don't really need to worry about the texture, I can just um, go back and forth shuffling my pencil just to shade an area a little bit more quickly and then if I want to refine it in terms of the amount of value or the texture I can always go back in and uh, maybe uh, do a little bit more of the careful cross hatching with a uh, with a tapered stroke where you can make those smoother transitions and where you can build up the value in certain areas a bit more gradually. So I'm shading these wrinkles on the uh, on the forehead area and I want to make that look three-dimensional. So you can't just draw lines because when you're doing realistic drawings you need to one of the first thing things that you need to understand is that you can't just leave lines, dark lines dangling there because they need to mean something to the viewer. So you need to shade them, you need to shade around them and you need to show uh, what is casting a shadow onto what and which part of that shape is facing away from the light source, which part is facing towards the light source. And here the top part of those wrinkles is facing up towards the towards those lights, towards the light source. So I'm making it a little bit lighter by dabbing on it with a kneaded eraser. I normally use two types of erasers, a kneaded eraser and uh, some kind of a pencil eraser, Tombow Mono Zero eraser or a Kohinoor pencil eraser. I find both of them pretty useful. Sometimes I use more of the pencil eraser, sometimes more of the kneaded eraser. It really depends on what I'm trying to achieve and what I feel like at the moment. So I'm moving on to this uh, cheek and cheekbone area and you can see this dark area under the eye, under the lower eyelid. That's very interesting because um, that part is usually a little bit lighter when the light source is coming from above and the the part of the eye socket facing down, which is uh, just just below the eyebrow, usually tends to be darker. But like I said, the light source here seems to be, or the lighting here appears to be a little bit more complex. So there's probably a lot of reflected light and uh, some complex shadows coming from different directions because of, uh, of the lighting which comes from multiple sources and you, you'll see things like that uh, when you when you're doing portraits of um, athletes or basketball players where you have those artificial lights so sometimes sometimes these uh, reference photos can be a little bit tricky but I, I think this this one went pretty smoothly and and um, I didn't have that much problem achieving likeness, I think. Obviously it's not perfect, uh, neither portrait is, but I, I think it went pretty well. You, you can see that here I'm shading this top part of his jersey and trying to make it darker so that so that the shape uh, of, that, of that figure that I'm going to draw below it would stand out. The ball and the head and the top part of the arm should be should all be lighter and should stand out against the darker background of that jersey because it's catching light from above so I'm gonna to need to achieve quite a bit of contrast there for those smaller shapes to stand out because uh, that, that's one of the problems I've had in this entire series of drawings is that uh, my customer requested, like I said, that uh, this should be a complex drawing where I should have multiple elements. And uh, in addition to the larger portrait, I always had those smaller figures, smaller shapes, or those highlight moves or signature moves. And uh, in those, you always have a smaller shape, a smaller figure 
and a smaller face and it can be really difficult to achieve likeness when you're drawing something that small and uh, that was one of the main challenges but I did the best that I could so you can see that I shaded the largest portion of the face. I'm just refining some of the details on the eyes, fixing those eyelashes a little bit. And now I'm going to move on to the lower part of the face and do this beard. The beard is shorter and neater here than in the first drawing, I think. But I still need to try to produce a little bit of random texture and I'm going to do that just by dragging my Kohinoor pencil and allowing it to create some dark random shapes. Also time to do a little bit of work on this logo. And for it I had to use some other color pencils. I used a little bit of this yellow or yellowish orange and then uh, I needed to finish the rest of this ball and uh, it seemed to be of dark red color and what do you know I had a dark red colored pencil in my pencil case because uh, Faber-Castell really has a nice range of colors so I can often find the exact color that I need and I have a couple of sets but I can also buy them separately that's another thing that I like about them anyway <clears throat> just uh, finishing some of the details on the beard and on the face and uh, refining the appearance of this larger portrait which obviously is the most important element the most the most important part of the drawing i also finished the logo and now i'm going to move on to this lower part of the drawing where i'm going to have lebron james and Dwayne wade but like i said these are going to be smaller drawings smaller shapes so i'm drawing this basketball here and i need to shade it so that the top part of the basketball is a lot lighter because it's catching light from above but I still want to add some smaller details to it and I'm doing a little bit of blending with a tutelian because sometimes the brush won't do because sometimes you need to blend some really really small areas and that's where I can use a homemade tutelian because these are rolled into a fine tip and they can help you blend these tiny areas. So drawing the arm and um, the lower part of the arm needs to be darker. And then just uh, moving on to the to the head where I really have some tiny details. You can barely make out the shapes such as uh, the eyes and the nose and the mouth like I said some of these details are really really tiny and I'm really doing the best I can in order to be able to draw something that remotely looks like LeBron James to make things more complicated we have Wade's right hand there obscuring a part of uh, obscuring a part of LeBron's shoulder I think and uh, a lot of uh, tiny details there that I need to work around and shade around. And then I just uh, want to pull some uh, smaller details on the jersey as well. I made this part of the jersey where the abdomen is a lot darker because I want to bring out uh, the chest area because it's kind of sticking out and catching more light from the light source so to emphasize that shape to, to emphasize that contrast i made the abdomen area a lot darker maybe added even more shadow that i can see in the reference so now i'm drawing some of these folds in the shorts 
I, I think Dwayne Wade's face went pretty well. I think I did achieve some likeness there. I think I got his eyes and the overall shape of the face to look pretty close to what it's supposed to look like. The top part of the head obviously needs to be a lot lighter, almost white, so that it would stand out against the darker background of that jersey. But like I said, this is the best I could do in such a smaller, tight space uh, when it comes to drawing a portrait or drawing a face because it's a really tiny drawing and now I just need to work around it and clean up some of the edges because clean edges are very important if I want these figures to stand out against the background to make the jersey look more three-dimensional I'm pulling some highlights using the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser and you can use this thing just like you would a pencil, you just pull and instead of creating a darker mark that you would with a pencil, you create a lighter mark it's not going to be completely white, but I don't need it to be completely white I can just create some suggestions of lighter areas so that these folds around the waist and the chest area on the jersey look a lot more three-dimensional and I'm going to pull some, some of those on the shorts as well and uh, I think as long as they kind of follow the shape and the movement of the body it should look, it should look fine he's also wearing some kind of a band or something around the arm here so I'm going to make that darker but as you can see the drawing is almost finished just a little bit of shading here on the shoulder and just a little bit of work to finish uh, the other hand and the drawing is almost done I'm putting down some finishing touches I'm gonna put my signature here I hope it I hope it won't be too conspicuous because I already have a ton of elements there and there it is now the drawing is done I hope you enjoy the drawing process. Thanks for watching. Check out my other videos. For longer videos and more content, you should check out my Patreon. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.